This interview is with a Mr. Farley Richmond. That's F-A-R-L-E-Y. R-I-C-H-M-O-N-D of Ardmore, Oklahoma. The original interview date is 1956. It is being re-recorded for inclusion in the Oklahoma Historical Society Oral History Program's permanent collections on July the 20th, 1984 by Judith Michener. The introduction to this interview is interrupted, recorded over. There are changes in speed of recording. There are voice distortions. These are all on the original recording. In this copy, we are attempting to eliminate as much of that as possible. If the beginning of the tape appears to be edited, it has not been edited as to content only to eliminate those extraneous parts of the introduction or recording flaws. The following is an interview with Mr. Farley A. Richmond, R-I-C-H-M-O-N-D, from the Ardmore area, made in 1956. August 31st, 1889. He has worked as superintendent and team contractor of highways and was construction and street street 48. He now lives at 26 5th Northeast, Ardmore, Oklahoma. I, I can give you some of the happenings of the police force in the early days. We had no policemen in the early days. I only had a night watchman. And his name is A.S. Pulliam. And, and his job was to night watch. And later on, the town site came and organized the town site, and we elected a mayor, chief of police, and alderman. And afterwards, we had three or four policemen. Buck Garrett. Uh, uh, Buck Garrett was our first chief of police. And okay. Our first fire department consisted of a bucket brigade. Jim Gage was our fire chief. Uh, we all worked without pay. When the fire alarm was sounded, we rushed to Jim Gage's tent shop. There we had a little hand cart that our buckets was in and we grabbed it and run to the fire. And we all fought without the fire without any compensation, whatever. Later on, there was a man by the name of George Lawrence took Jim Gulledge's place. Jim left from some course. And it was kept up until we bought the first fire engine, which was the L.L. Stowe. And it still didn't have no fire paid department, but we used L.L. Stowe. And firing the L.L. Stowe would start kindling under the boiler and cut strips of fat bacon and pile all that. And and coal oil the kindling and we'd light a fire and by the time we get to the world had two wells on Main Street. Time we get to the wells we'd have up steam. The boilers had copper flues which steam very readily. And later on the fire department bought a, a more up to date engine which they still have, call it the L C Slaughter and elected appointed L C Slaughter as fire chief. Since then, the fire department's grown and grown until it's up to its present strength. That's about the whole last thing. That's the... Uh, yeah, I don't know what, okay. what else else. The water department. I don't remember yet what year it is. All right. The water department was organized by Bob Dick. And I just remember just what year, about 19... Bob Dick conceived the idea of building this city lake. 
having no funds, the businessmen contributed to the fund for the construction of that lake with the understanding that they should be reimbursed from the vote of the bond, which there was. And in about 1904, a contract was let. 1903, the city lake was built. In 1904, a contract was let for the water system and we now have our present border system built up to what you, we know of now. That's fine. In 1902, the Chickasaw Lake contract was let, which I got and built Chickasaw Lake. And then right after we finished that, I moved my tool over to the City Lake Dam and worked on it. Next. The lake was built was Rod and Gun Club Lake, North the Lake, in 1907. And I also built that. And I built two or three other lakes, one to solve for one at Medill, away from here. And also the Bert Simpson Lake on the Bio, Grassy Lake. Swan Lake here. I believe that's all. Okay. Yeah, the laborers who worked us on most of these jobs was niggers. <laughs> and our wages was a dollar a day. We paid three dollars a day for a man and team. <laughs> and worked eight hours. And about the time I built the Chickasaw Lake, I raised that salary to four dollars a day, and everybody thought for a team, and everybody thought it had gone crazy. <laughs> uh, later on, wages begin to go on up and up and up until where they at present. At present, now the compass. I, first industry of the mind or anything. It was built in Ardmo, it was a Chickasaw complex, built by H. H. Pennington, who was built in 1894, and worked about 50 or 60 men. And later on, the very next year, by the oil mill was built, who worked nearly as many men. We thought we were just getting along fine, having that many men employed. And it was built by W.R. Moore, the oil mill boy. And I believe that's all. 1896, the oil mill began to have gins built in the small towns all over the country. And and there being nobody, wasn't, nobody prepared to haul heavy boilers, in 96 I ordered a big boiler wagon. And so I could haul the boilers out to the different gins, which I all must have hauled some ten, fifteen, to some ten or fifteen gins. I, one of the wheels is uh, at present on Fifth Avenue and Caddo Street of that big wagon. <laughs> First newspaper I remember being published in Northmore was published by a man by the name of Bradley and a small sheep. Who run a what the town is, a shop for the purpose of printing letterheads and so on? He got out sh small sheep. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. First brick building that's ever built in Ardmore was built by Pope and Charlie Anderson, right about where Bramlett. Tag agent's office here, and it's about 12 or 14 feet, little brick building. I remember us boys uh, making fun of him, building a side, a little sidewalk out, and built it out of mud, and we said, hey, look at that old man. He built that pretty little building, and then put mud in front of it. I didn't expect to get, it, <laughs> get in. We didn't know that the cement would harden at that time. That's about all about them. No, it was early night, wasn't it? I, I can give you a story. 
First of all, rig well was ever drilled and caught a drill for oil and caught a candle was drilled on the Jim Rector place, about a mile and a half or two miles northwest of the present town of Oil City. And was drilled with a star machine. I hauled it out from Ardmore and, and to the site. And I hit was a dry hole, however. And the name of the company was Ardmore Boston Company, the drill of the well. Arthur Hyde was in charge. The equipment we used in Graydon Streets in 1930 even was all horse drawn. We didn't have no motorized equipment. And the graders consist of horse drawn graders and scrapers and fresnos. And we later on uh, commenced buying equipment and in four or five years later we had done away with the horsepower graders uh, all together. The first payment of any consequence laid in Ardmore was late in 1906 and extended from Santa Fe Railroad tracks to Scott Street West, west to Scott Street, and consisted of concrete pavement. Uh, that's about all. Engineers, and uh, the Bradford boy, Bob Bradford. Uh, what are we going to uh, oh, in the early days there wasn't anybody had any deed to the property. They got permission from the Indian to build and pay so much a year, a small amount a year for uh, doing so, until the town site came and uh, allotted this, these lots to the people that are presently on them. That's about all I know. Okay. 1901 is when they yeah. was made. In the early day, hogs run at large all over town and round on the main street where, where people throw the water out to be a hog while it's knee deep. Hogs lay in the mud up to their eyes. And that lasted for some three or four years until they passed on what they call a hog law and took them off to the street. Well, it was cattle and, and horses. What? In that day, the hogs took care of the sewers and place having a sewer system, we depended on the hogs. <laughs> the questions asked the interviewee on this tape or in this interview were cut out by the original interviewers back in 1956 when the interview was originally conducted. It was not done as part of the cleaning up process of the copying of this tape. It was in the original interview.